Chris Martin for Creative Cal and welcome to the first in what I hope will be a series of tutorials on RealFlow. Uh, today what we're going to do is create this sort of an effect using Cinema 4D and RealFlow. So it's kind of the, uh, you get a lot of people asking me about how do you create uh, your logo made of water so that's sort of what this tutorial will go through. So let's jump right into Cinema 4D. I've got my scene set up. It's a simple animation. I've got a little camera move going on here. And it's about 137 frames long. And from 90 to 137, the camera pulls back. And we've got the logo that's revealed. Now, what we're going to try and do is fill up the, the, the phi symbol here uh, with the water. So we've got that text. Uh, separated from the the other text, the 1618 designs, the phi is separate. So the first thing I want to do is go to my plugins, next limit, SD export, and I want to select a phi. Uh, I'm going to give it an output file. I'm going to call this phi3. And I am going to save the SD file. Then we'll go to real flow. We will give this a name and a path. Say OK. Create a new project. I want to go up here, add a new object to the scene, go to import, and go to my water logo and select Phi 3. And then we get the mesh imported in here into real flow. So the first thing I want to do is drop a few things that I'm going to need in here. The first being gravity. I'm going to need a kill volume. And I'm going to need an emitter. And we're going to use a square emitter for this. Let's go to the volume. Say fit to scene. And let's make this a little wider. And the reason we're using the volume kill is because whenever you're working with particles you don't want any of the particles to escape and get out into this area and just start floating around wherever they want to because what happens is real flow has to continue calculating and the further those get away the more calculations have to be done and it could uh, eventually just shut your computer down so you want to make sure when you're working with particles in real flow to always work within a, a some sort of a, a volume killer like this. Now let's look at our square emitter and we're going to have to move this around because we want to get that so that it's located right here inside the phi. So first of all let's give it a negative 90 rotation in Z and let's try and get it lined up here. Just move it around kind of eyeballing this. Zoom in. And I'm using W, E, and R to uh, for these controls here to control the transforms. And then one, two, three, and four give you your different uh, views. Let's see. It looks pretty good. Looks like it's in there. Let's go ahead and save that. Now let's look at the properties over here. Uh, I'm going to take my max particles to 80,000. And the resolution that I'm going to use here is 20. Now let's go down to the speed and we're going to take the speed up to 5 and we're going to leave everything else at default and by the way the default here for all of these things is what uh, this uh, simulates water so I'm going to lock the timeline here just to see how my uh, emitter is flowing so I'm going to lock that that way we're not recording any keyframes 
and click on simulate and that looks pretty good I think that's probably gonna work so let me stop that I'm gonna reset this and I'm gonna unlock my timeline so that now when we click simulate we're gonna be recording keyframes and what's gonna happen is this is going to run through the timeline and it's gonna fill this completely up so we'll go ahead and start that and I'm going to pause the video and be back when we're done just thought I'd pop back in here and show you guys how it's uh, looking so far we're at uh, about 31 frames into it and we've got 11,000 particles in here and uh, you can see it's steadily filling it up so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and I'll be back when we're done okay so we're back we're done simulating and let me show you what we've got let me just run through the timeline here the uh, liquids pouring into the the mesh and it's filling it up and looks pretty cool so it ended up going 182 frames and we ended up with 69,784 particles so now what we need to do is we need to convert these particles into a mesh that we can actually take back into Cinema 4D or whatever your 3D application of choice is. So I'm going to go over here to a uh, frame like this where I have some particles that are just kind of thrown up over here. And what we need to do is put a mesh object in here. So this little icon here does that. And if it didn't automatically put the emitter underneath the mesh you can just right click the mesh and say insert fluids and then pick your emitter but it did and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna change the polygon size to 0 0.03 I'm going to change the filter method to yes and change the tension to 0.1 I'm gonna come to the square emitter go to the field I'm going to leave the blend factor radi uh, the blend factor at 95 and the radius to 0 0.02 and hit enter. Then I'm going to come back to the mesh, right click and say build. And this kind of gives us an idea of what our uh, mesh is going to look like. We can come over here and say view element smooth shaded and then we can kind of see this is what our liquid is going to look like while it's pouring into the mesh here. So that looks pretty good, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to go to export, export all, and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on this button that says build meshes. And then what's happening is RealFlow is going in here and it's creating a mesh for each frame of the animation. So as soon as this is done I'll be right back. Okay so we're back and the meshing is complete so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back into Cinema 4D and I went ahead and updated the timeline uh, changed the number of frames to 182 and just um, uh, just pulled the, uh, the keyframe the camera pulling back I took that all the way to uh, to 182 here so that's the only difference now what we can do is we can just go ahead and turn the phi off the symbol here because we don't need that anymore and we will go in here and we'll load in through our next limit and mesh loader we'll load in our mesh sequence and that's in the the meshes folder here we'll load the first one click OK and you'll see that it's um, it's put the mesh in there in place of the uh, the phi that we had so if you click on some of these you can see how it's filling up the mesh or where the mesh was so now it's simply uh, uh, all we have to do is just put some materials on it and we can take a render here 
and you can see that we have our our water here we probably ought to throw in a a background and create a new material yeah. put that on our background render that out and that kinda looks alright so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna set up uh, just to render this out all frames save give it a name anti-aliasing best animation I'm gonna go ahead and render this out and I'll be back just as soon as it's done Okay, we're back, and we've got the uh, got the animation rendered out. So uh, looks pretty good. And that's going to wrap up the tutorial for today. My name is Chris Martin for Creative Cow. We'll see you next time.